And now, on Prophetic Faith. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another week's broadcast here at Prophetic Faith. I am Pastor Robbie Barrett, pastor of Accelerant Faith Ministries in Tazewell, Virginia. Tonight, we are going into part two of the pressure of what I want. Isn't it pressure? So many times, the hardest things we do in life is deciding what we really want. You know, we are in a generation that really has no clue what they want. They're searching here. They're searching there. They want this, they think they want that, but in reality, we really don't know what we want so many times. And the problem with that is, and the issue is, is guess what? God does not operate that way. That's what this teaching is all about. It's teaching us and showing us the nature of God. God is a God of, spe of specifics and details yes he wants details he doesn't want you to come to him and I'm gonna teach you tonight these past two weeks I've been teaching you how to get your prayers answered how to get things moving in your life do you need them moved well then listen you've got to learn how to know what you want he says this in one passage he says you ask you have not because you ask not okay well I've been asking well he says you ask but you ask amiss and so many times people think well that means you just you're asking out of God's will that's not always the case sometimes you're too out there and by that I mean you just say something non-specific you just say God just bless me uh, uh, just just pull me out of something or just do something in my life so many times we pray those prayers, and guess what? They sound real good, and they sound lovely, and hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But guess what? It's not going to do anything. It's not going to make anything happen in your life. And if you are not seeing things moving and happening in your life, I guarantee you that is one of the reasons. You're missing that key point, and that is God says, what do you want? Before you come to me, before you ask me to do something, find out be specific you seek it out know what you want and then bring it to me and watch me do the impossible in your life this is going to be very good let's get into the message and i will see you at the end of the program that's why you mean what god pre he presented all the congregation of israel he said choose this day you choose I'm not going to choose it for you. He, life or death, blessing or curse. But you know what? The good news is he gave you the answer. He said, choose life. But he knows and he understands until you make up your mind, you're not going to stick with it. Now look at Hebrews 4, 1 through 3. Look at this. It says, let us therefore fear, lest they promise being left us of entering into his rest. I want you to remember that. That any of you should seem to come short, not make it. Go ahead. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them, but the word preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with what? You can hear the word all day long. But until it's mixed with faith, it's not going to profit you. Next verse. It says, for which we have believed do enter into that rest. What is your battle in life? It is laboring to enter into that rest. What do I mean? In your mind. There are certain things that is my responsibility, but there are other things that only God can do, and I'm going to rest in Him. That's that labor. How many knows you have to labor to get into that? 
You have to labor to transform your mind. It's not just going to happen. All right, he says, I have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. Can I ask you a question? I'm going to make you think in here today. Did the Israelites fail from taking the promised land because they didn't believe? Now, now before you say that, that's exactly why. What do we have to have with our faith? We have to have patience. We have to have a made up mind. The problem was not that they did not believe. If they had an issue, they would bring it before God. You need to do this. We're tired of manna. We're tired of this. Give us water. They were looking to God. The only, here was their issue. Half the time they wanted to be back in Egypt. The other half of the time, they wanted what God had for them. They wanted the promised land. And today we find ourselves so many times in the same place. You want this over here, but you want that over there. I told you, it's not your faith. Everybody in here, you've got the faith. He said he's given every man a measure of faith. If you are a child of God in here today, you have a measure of faith. The issue is... They did not have a made-up mind. That's why they didn't know what they really wanted. That's why half the time they wanted Egypt, they wanted to go back. The other time, the other half of the time, they wanted the promised land. Now, watch this. It's no wonder that James says a double-minded person is what? Unstable in all of his ways. That's what they were. They were unstable. They were happy one minute, sad the next. They had peace one minute, they had chaos the next. They were believing God one minute, the other half of the time, they, they wasn't, everything's going to go down. They had no stability. There is no rest in stability. Or in instability. There is no rest. So here's what you've got to understand. That's why he said you must labor to enter into that rest because until your mind gets renewed, there is no stability. And where there is no stability, there is no rest. You ever hear somebody tell you they're believing God and they're not getting any sleep? They're chewing their nails. I'm just trusting in the Lord. I'm just believing God. No, you're not. You're trying to do something. All right, now watch this. Some of you want God to do something, but you don't know what you want. God can't do that. I say God can't do that. God is precise. He is detailed. How many has ever, how many's ever had God just tell you, uh, you know, I'm going to do something in your life. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to do something. Never. God is detailed. He already knows the end from the beginning. He ha- watch this. He has a detailed plan for your life. You may not know every turn and every step, but as you go, come on, He will reveal to you. Okay, it's time to turn right. It's time to make this step. Why? Because He has a plan. So He wants you. What does He ask of us? He wants us to want to or to know what we want. Make up your mind. I'm going to give you an easy example. My wife, probably a year ago, said, "I wanted an Apple Watch." I want an Apple Watch. And this is why I said, I said, well, you know, Fitbit's got nice watches. I said, do you want this? Do you want that? She said, no, I want an Apple Watch. That's what I want. She knew what she wanted. All right, and then the time came. Now, it didn't happen immediately. The time came, and I had the power to give her the Apple Watch. So guess what? Because I knew what she wanted, I could give it to her. But if she come to me, watch this. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. If she came to me and said, I want to watch. 
What kind? I don't know. I just want some kind of watch. Do you want an Apple Watch? Do you want a... Uh, do you want a smart, yeah, an IMAX watch? Do you want a, a Fitbit watch? What, what do you want? I don't know. But just give me a watch. Do you see what I'm trying to tell you? That's how many of us come to God. God says, what do you want? I don't know, but do something. God's not like that. He wants to know what you want. When Bartimaeus came to him and he was crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. What did he say when he came to him? He, he called him. He said, come to me. He, what did he say? He said, what do you want? Ask your neighbor again, what do you want? What do you want? Have you made up your mind? This is what God is showing me. This is the direction that God's having me to go. And I've made up my mind. Okay, then you're on your way. But if you know what God's wanting to do for you, but you keep wrestling back and forth, why? Because you're looking at the impossibilities. Well, God said this, but look at this right here. You've not made up your mind. You have the faith but you don't have the patience to go with it. So when trouble comes, and it will come, when the pressure comes, here's what you're going to do. You're going to back off from it. And that's what the Israelites did. If you notice that as long as there was no army raising up against them, no hardship, they were good to go. All right, let's go to the promised land. Praise God. Let's go. But the moment that there was a Red Sea in front of them and the army of Egypt behind them or if there was some other kind of nation raising up against them or some kind of issue raising up, what happened to them? They would immediately back off of the promise that God gave them. A double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need patience. Now, if you've been listening to this message, turn to your neighbor and say, I want patience. <laughs> I want patience. Because now I understand it's not just waiting, but it's the ability to have a made-up mind. So let me say it to you like this. Do you want a house or do you want the house? Oh... I've never been in a church like this before because everybody's always taught me, you know, you just take what you can get. No, 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 no. Do you want a house or do you want the house that God has for you? Do you want a job or do you want the job that God has for you? Make up your mind. Because Let me, let me help you out in here today. Let me help you. God is not saying, okay, tell me what you want. And then he's going over here and say, am I able to do this? No, that's you. God says, I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ever think you want. Woo. I'm able to do it. I'm going to tell you something that God told me. He said, if you can see it, you can have it. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how impossible. As a matter of fact, the reason why God presents to you impossibilities, He wants you to dream big in Him, envision big, is to show you that when He brings it forth, that He is literally able to do the impossible, that nothing is too hard for Him. We ought to put our hands together and give God some praise in here this morning. When Moses came to Him and said, Okay, Lord, the people, they want this. Moses, I mean, he was nervous. He said, Moses, is my hand waxed short that I'm not able to do this? Is there anything too hard for me? Look at Romans 12, 2. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you look in this nation, if you look in society, if you look in this generation, they don't know what they want. They literally don't know what they want. One day they want this, the next day they want something totally different. They don't know what they want. Because that is a conformed mind. 
When you do not have a singleness of mind, when you have a double mind, that tells you right away, my mind's not renewed. I need to renew my mind. Because let me, let me explain something to you. This is not, this is so simple, but yet it's so deep. This, this verse right here. <clears throat> a renewed mind is simply this. It is a mind that takes off the limits. That's all it is. I want you to look at the Israelites again. We can look at the Israelites and we can say they were more than able to take that promised land, right? I mean, you hear us preach about it all the time. I don't know why they doubted God. I don't know why they had such a hard time. But God was with them. They were more than capable. Do you know why you, can, you and I can say that easily? Because we're not in that situation. Watch this. We are looking from God's perspective into the circle. A renewed mind is simply a mind that looks at it from God's perspective. Are you hearing me? That's what a renewed mind is. When sickness comes and attacks your body, it doesn't look at what the CDC says. It looks at it through the eyes of God. Y'all are not hearing me in here today. When, when trouble hits you, it doesn't look like the world looks at it. It looks at it through the eyes and the perspective of God. That's why we can look at it and say, hey, they were more than able. But when they were in it, all they could see was the impossibilities. How tough it was. How hard it was. When you renew your mind, you literally take the limits off. There is, there is a statement that God spoke to me a few years ago, and I tell it to him all the time as a praise statement to him. He says, I want you to put no limits on me in your personal life and no limits on me in your ministry on what I can do. So every day, just about every day, I'll tell God, I'll say, no limits, Lord. No limits, Father, to what you can do in my personal life and what you can do in my ministry. Now, it's more than just making that statement. I have to renew my mind because you know what everything around me is telling me? Limits. There's limits. How many has ever had God tell you something, a promise? Raise your hand. Now raise your hand if the circumstances were in agreement. Didn't see one hand. They were never in agreement. Can I help you in here today? God doesn't need them to be in agreement to do what He said in your life. It doesn't matter. Okay, so remember this. A renewed mind is a mind with no limits. Let me ask you again. Could you make up your mind on what you wanted if you knew that there were no limits? Oh, it'd be a different ball game, wouldn't it? You ever hear somebody, you ever get together with somebody, they say, I'll tell you what, if I win the lottery, if I had this, I had that, I'd do this right here, I'd do that right there. Do you know why you're talking like that? Because you are imagining yourself with no limits. The reason, what are you, what are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you the reason why you can't make up your mind is because your mind is not renewed and you still have limits. You're, you're basing what you want on what you can do. And, and let me assure you, you can do very little. He said, I could do all things through Christ. He didn't say through me. He said through Christ, which strengthens me. That's when I got to get my mind on Him. I have to renew it. I have to be transformed. So... It's easy to know what you want when you have the limits removed. Oh, watch this. That's why Jesus said, with faith, all things are possible. 
praise God. I am so excited about this teaching. And let me tell you why. Because it is something that has been hidden from the body of Christ for too many years. So many people have had this mindset, you know, God doesn't care what you want. It's not about what you desire. It's all about what God desires. It's what He wants and everything else just doesn't matter. That is not the truth. He said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you've received it. All right, but we've been missing something. And that is, we've been too vague. Too vague. So many people, when they pray, when they pray prayers, they pray too vague. Or if they're praying for a loved one or a friend or somebody who's uh, requested prayer, they just pray too vaguely. Oh, Lord, just do something in their life. And all those things, while they sound lovely on the surface, there's really no power behind them. Because faith has to see something. And I don't mean in the physical, I mean in the spirit. Faith has to grab hold of something. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Well, how can you have substance if you don't have detail? How can you have substance if you don't know what you want? Lord, this is such a, ta- a challenge for us today is because we are a society and a generation that doesn't know what we want. We want this, we want that. Well, I don't know. I thought I wanted this, but maybe I want this over here. Listen, God wants you to learn and, and find out, seek out what you want. I mean, truly want. There's been so many times in my life where God has told me. He says, you go, you sit down, you get a plan, you be detailed about it, you be specific about it, then you come to me. Now, that makes the religious world mad. Why? Because that means that God is working with you. You're you're in fellowship with God. He's your father. You're his child. That gives you power, dominion, and authority. The religious world doesn't like that, and Satan definitely doesn't want you to know that. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God has put you up in a position where He wants to work side by side with you, partnership with you. I'll never forget this statement that God gave me, and I'm going to share this with you. He said, if it's important to you, it's important to me. I'll never forget that statement that God made me. Now, that, that, that's just a position. That's just a place that I have in God. That's a closeness. That He's not just God to me. He's my Father. He is my confidant. Are you listening to me? So when I walk through this walk with God, this life with God, there are times where God says, I want you to make a plan. I want you to tell me what you want. See, He trusts me enough for me to tell Him what I want. And that's the place that God wants to take you to. If you don't get anything else out of this teaching, get this, that God wants to walk with you in such a way where He begins to take your desires, your wants, and do something with them. That's called trust. That's called partnership. And see, there's a place you can come in God where God says, hey, I trust what you want because I know you're not gonna want something, you're not gonna desire something that's gonna be out of my will that's going to be out of my plan for your life. So I trust you. So come to me with details, come to me with specifics, and then I can do something. I can show forth my power and my glory. Be specific. I want to pray for you right now that specifics will come to you, details will come to you about your situation, so that when you take them before the throne of grace, You can watch God do the miraculous in your life because I'm telling you, He's more than ready. He's more than ready to do the impossible. He's looking for people to to believe Him for those things. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for every person that's watching this, Lord. Father, I pray right now that they will dream big, think big, talk big, but they will do it by specifics and details. I pray that they will come to the place where their faith will be perfected so that they will want nothing. So that they will come to the place where they know what they want in the kingdom of God. What you have given unto them. So that you are now 
the limitations have been taken off of you, the chains have been taken off of you, so that now you can work in their life. You can answer prayers. You can move the things that have stood in their path for long enough. And I just want to thank you right now for the testimonies that's coming forth, for the breakthrough, for the miracles, the signs and the wonders that are coming forth, because you are, the st you are still the God of all those things. And I thank you and I praise you for it now. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Listen to me. You can't watch these programs and stay in doubt and unbelief. You can't do it. Because that's my assignment. My assignment is to break the enemy's hold off of God's people. It's to destroy His works and it's to take back everything that rightfully belongs to God. And that includes you. So... I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. I want to thank our faith partners for partnering with this ministry. And if you are watching this program and you would like to help this ministry, partner with this ministry, pre, uh, please pray about doing that because you help us get this gospel, this good news out to as many outlets as we can. And we use many different outlets to get these messages out to people through social media, podcasts, YouTube, uh, television, so many different ways. We're trying to get as many ways as we can to get this gospel out because guess what? Time is running out. But there's still much, much work to do. So you help us do that. So again, thank you. And thank you for tuning in tonight. And until then, keep walking by faith. I will see you right here next week. Be blessed. If you would like to become a faith partner, please contact us at P.O. Box 264, Tazewell, Virginia 24651. You may also reach us at 276-971-2333. You may also request information at AccelerateFaith.org. Our email for faith partners are faithpartner at AccelerateFaith.org as well.